I want to welcome everybody to our ceremony to honor and to bring awareness to the Children's Grief Awareness Day. This was, uh, you know, a lot of times I remember, you know, before I got involved in nonprofit work, you know, you, you would always see these ribbons, you know, the pink ones and the yellow ones and orange and, you know, everything stood for something else. And, you know, I, I, and my, my real, I would say, immature kind of elementary view of it was, you know, what, you know, it seems like there's always a ribbon for some for some cause out there. You know, is that really necessary? But I got to tell you, when it hits your cause and it's true to your heart and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, much much like all of you here today, you know, I'm I get it. I, it's coming around. You know, just telling our staff to wear blue today, uh, everybody wearing the blue ribbon, uh, you know, having the banner up, recognizing all those that are involved uh, today. Um, really puts it in perspective and changes my heart to say, you know, it is important to wear our, wear our blue ribbons today and, and to bring awareness to what each of us do on a day-in, day-out basis. And that's uh, being in front of and, and, and being compassionate and opening arms to serving families who really seek support after the death of a loved one. And more importantly, children. You know, the future of this world is in our youth, you know, and... Uh, they have value in, 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 in our everyday life. And I know for a lot of families out there that are grieving, they've lost a, 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 a brother or sister, a son or a daughter, a spouse. You know, it's those kids that really uh, uh, put it in perspective. They help us to continue on. They, they, they help us in our healing process because, uh, uh, and, they, and more importantly, they help us keep that their loved one's memory alive too and the memories that we share together through pictures or old videos uh, and all those things that are necessary as part of the healing process. So I want to welcome everybody here today on behalf of Cornerstone of Hope and all the sponsors. They're listed on the banner up there. Um, National Alliance for Grieving Children really spearheaded this thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a national movement that's, you know, there's ceremonies happening like this all across the country today and we're one of them here in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, Cornerstone of Hope, Life Bank is here, uh, Milano Monuments, New York Life, uh, Bush Fam Funeral and Crematory Services, um, the Catholic Cemeteries is also a sponsor, and uh, I want to do a special call out to Marcella Boyd and Boyd Funeral Home because um, here we are, a grief center, and I'd like to tell you uh, this was our idea to get this together, but it was really M M Marcella who spearheaded this and said, you know, we need to do this collaboratively and collectively as a community to bring awareness to this day. And um, she really brought everybody together. And so I want to thank Marcella. Really appreciate it. Um, so at that point, it's a, it's a good time to bring Marcella up to introduce herself. And she's going to say a few words, and we're going to continue with the program. Good afternoon to everybody. Don't we have beautiful weather? Didn't it hold out? We've had the storm upon us, but we have a beautiful day to celebrate. Thank you, Mark, for your gracious words of introduction and for hosting and emceeing our event today. To th I want to say good afternoon again and to thank all of you for joining us. Our purpose in gathering today is to observe Children's Grief Awareness Day. This day occurs every year on the third Thursday in November, the Thursday before Thanksgiving. This is an appropriate time of year to support grieving children because the upcoming holiday season is especially painful after a child has experienced the death of a loved one. So the purpose of Children's Grief Awareness Day and the reason we have gathered is to let everyone know that awareness and support can make a tremendous difference in the life of a grieving child. This day is an opportunity to raise awareness and support millions of grieving children across our nation and in our world, and the thousands of grieving children right here in our own communities. These are children and young people whom we know and see in our daily lives. This day ensures that they receive support, love, and the prayers they need. Here are just two brief facts on children and grief. Before they graduate from high school, one child, of, uh, one child out of every 20 will have a parent die. This number does not include children who experience the death of a sibling, 
a close grandparent, uncle, aunt, or friend. Children who have had someone die, especially a close family member, can feel the loss forever. They eventually go back to school and resume their activities, and they might seem to be functioning normally. But what we cannot see is that there is still a giant hole inside of their hearts. So today, we bring attention to grieving children who have been overlooked and whose sorrow has been minimized. We honor them today by laying a wreath of honor here at the feet of the statue of Jesus, who first embraced children many centuries ago. In 10 minutes, we will conclude with an inspirational balloon release that raises the hopes and spirits of grieving children in our communities. So on behalf of my co-sponsors, I thank you for caring about grieving children, and I thank you for your support and for spreading the word about this very important issue. God bless. So now I'm gonna turn over the mic to Reverend Robert Picard. Shall we bow our, our heads, please? Father, we come before you on this august occasion, and we ask, Father, that you will look on the hearts of the parents. Look on the hearts of those who have the care of these children who suffer through so very much. Your word says, suffer the children to come upon us, to come among us, and deny them not. Father, we ask that your grace your strength, your blessings be bestowed upon the children, that you continue to minister to those of us who care for them, and even to those families. We ask that you steal their hearts. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you continue to strengthen them and encourage them, and even to give us the grace to honor them, to minister to them, to pray prepare for them as they move forward. These are difficult times for children, and we ask that you bless us with the grace and you pour into our spirits that which they need, that we might care for them, that they may continue to move forward and to prosper. Father, we love you and we need you, as do the children. And all of these blessings we ask in your son's name. Amen. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be. Everybody searching for a hero. People need someone to look up to. I never found anyone who fulfilled my needs. A lonely place to be. So I learned to depend on me. I decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadows. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I live as I believe. No matter what they take from me, they can take away my dignity. The greatest love of all is happening to me. The greatest love 
of all is happening inside of me. The greatest love of all. It is the greatest love of all. And if by chance that special place that you've been dreaming of, it leads you to a lonely place. Gotta, gotta hear it again. For uh, um, one more round of applause for Nicole Johnson. Nicole, awesome. If I can have the, the children, uh, representatives, and their families come up and join me at the podium. Um, Hamers, uh, Melissa. Isaiah. Anthony. You know, one of my favorite quotes in our building, uh, Nicole just, you know, finished on that beautiful love note, was grief is not a sign of weakness or a lack of faith. It is the price of love. And, uh, you know, love always wins. And at the foundation of what I always tell families who come in through here, a lot of times the first times they walk through the doors, um, just them walking in, they just start breaking out in tears and crying because they just can't imagine that they ever had to walk into a grief center someday. Uh, but when I have a chance to sit with families, I always tell them it takes tremendous courage to walk through these doors. And there's a positive uh, feeling and emotion and connection that brings you here. And, and it's not necessarily pain, it's love that, walk, that brings you through these doors. And uh, we have some kids here that are going to make some comments and just talk about their experience here at Cornerstone and what Cornerstone has meant to them. So I'm going to start with Allison. And, uh, just going to ask you, you know, if you could just tell those that are here today, you know, maybe your experience of Cornerstone or what your favorite part of Cornerstone is, and and uh, and, and also relate to them um, the loss that brought you here as well. Um, I lost my dad on Valentine's Day of last year, and Cornerstone has helped me a lot. Um, all the artwork has really helped me. Um, as crazy as art sounds, it actually has helped a lot. It um, it gives you a chance to find your inner self. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let's hear it for Allison. And then Melissa also agreed to have a few comments too. Melissa, you want to talk about what brought you to Cornerstone and um, just some of your experiences here at Cornerstone? What brought me to Cornerstone is that my father passed away um, in 2011 and then my mother passed away this summer so now I live with my aunt and uncle and I like Cornerstone because they have you do artwork and it really lets you express yourself and makes you get through grief. It's here for Melissa. I know Isaiah and Anthony didn't want to say anything but you know I just they're you want to say something? All right you, you got it. All right, you want to talk about why Cornerstone brought you here, or what brought you to Cornerstone, and then just some of your, any comments you have about Cornerstone of Hope. Um, my dad brought me Cornerstone, um, because he got in a car accident on Christmas Eve, and, um, what I like about Cornerstone is the adults helping us feel better about, make us feel better, making us have good feelings and with our dad and awesome. family talk on. Awesome. Thank you. Great job.
I mean, what tremendous courage for these youth to get up here and just, just in those few seconds to share their story and share how important grief support is for them. Um, I just got to give you guys a big hug. You got some great job. Good job. We're gonna, what we're going to do now is uh, uh, I'm just going to move the podium. If I can have the kids kind of collectively take the wreath on the on the other side of the podium and just put it here at the at the foot of Jesus, uh, we can just all do that together. Thank you again to the kids. You can uh, rejoin your families out in the in the audience there. It really that really brings it home about the meaning of, of, of the type of support and the importance of the support we provide. Um, I do just briefly want to recognize some of the proclamations that we've uh, that we've received today. Uh, one is from State Representative Marlene Anowski. Uh, she's a state representative for the state of Ohio. Uh, the second one is from the city of Cle Cleveland, Mayor Frank Jackson. Um, we also received a proclamation from uh, the U.S. Member of Congress, uh, Marsha Fudge, and uh, we also have uh, Peter Nelson here representing the city of Independence um, that has a proclamation as well, as well. So being that we're in Independence, I'll have Peter come up and I'll just read a few comments off of the proclamation. And then we're going to prepare for uh, the balloon release as Nicole sings as the balloons escape into the sky here. The city recognizes uh, November 15, 2012 is National Children's Grief Awareness Day, a day dedicated to grieving children to remind them that they are not alone. And on this day, Cornerstone of Hope will dedicate a balloon release and wreath of honor ceremony to help bring support to the efforts of National Children's Grief Awareness Day. So thank you to the city and all those that provided proclamations for us today. Uh, Bob's gonna come up for a final prayer. And then after Bob, Nicole, I'd ask you to join us at the podium. And uh, we're gonna be to, uh, bringing balloons out to the crowd here. And then we'll, we can release, the, once we're ready to release them, We'll do a countdown. We're going to have the kids kind of come back up. We're going to do a countdown from 10, and then uh, we'll release the balloons. So, Bob, if you want to uh, close us in prayer. Let us again bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the strength of the children. We ask that you continue to bless Cornerstone, that we will be able to continue to meet their needs. We thank you for all of those who attended, all of those who supported them. And now we ask that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that you be with us as we continue to go throughout this day. And again, we love you and we need you. And all of these prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to have the kids come up again right here in the middle. Isaiah and Anthony and Ashley and Allison and Melissa. And, uh, once everyone has a balloon, you guys are going to do the countdown, okay?
Everybody have a balloon? All right, kids, we're going to start at 10. We want you to count it down from 10 all the way till, and then uh, after you hit one, you can say, let it go, or something, something nice and loud, okay? All right, so let's begin our countdown. Ready? Nice and loud. 10.